In Matthew 24, mm -hmm. uh, verses 4 and 5, yep. it says, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Mm. Could you not just be another person who is saying that they are Jesus, and so therefore could just be another dece deceiver, mm. as stated in this verse? Yeah, good question. Now, um, firstly, I did say those words. Mm -hmm. So I did say that the people need to be careful about people who deceive them or attempt to deceive them. I was aware already that there were a growing number of spirits in the spirit world who were ready to deceive people by claiming that they were me. And as it's turning out now, there are literally, as, as I've said in other times, that there are literally hundreds of thousands of spirits in the spirit world who go around to people on earth and in the spirit world claiming to be me. And some of those people who they go to are definitely deceived. In addition, on earth, there are thousands of people who claim to be me. And, uh, and many of the people who listen to them are deceived. Mm -hmm. That's the fact. And could I be a deceiver? Yes, of course I could. Under the same circumstances, I could be a deceiver. However, I can't be a deceiver just by somebody claiming that I'm a deceiver based on a Bible scripture. Sure. See, many of the people who email me these kind of emails do not realise they're basically saying that the Bible says that deceivers will come, so you must be a deceiver. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, well, there's no logic in that argument whatsoever. Firstly, if the Bible says deceivers will come, then deceivers will certainly come. I'd agree with that. But it doesn't automatically make me a deceiver. Yeah. What makes me a deceiver? A deceiver is a person who purposefully manipulates the truth in order to control or manipulate other people and, and perhaps do things based on their own ends and, and means. A deceiver knows the truth themselves, but chooses to tell a lie. Mm -hmm. That's what a deceiver does. Now, I would say that many of the people who claim to be me are not deceivers. Mm. Many of them believe themselves to be me. And that doesn't make them a deceiver. It makes them a person who's deluded. Yeah. which is a very different condition than being a deceiver. Yeah. A person who is a deceiver knows that they are not me or knows they are not Jesus and still claims to be. And there's many hundreds of thousands of those people in the spirit world who know they are not personally Jesus, but they claim to be me because they get certain things out of it. Yeah. There are also persons on earth who claim to be me and they know they are not me, but they, think, they say that to get things out of it. But there are other people on earth who claim to be me who are just overcloaked by the deceiving spirits. Sure. The person themselves claiming to, to be me is being deceived by the deceiving spirit. Sure. And I agree that the spirit is deceiving, but the person on earth is deluded and also easily manipulated into belief of something. So there's a lot going on. So there's a lot going on, but, but also I want to make this point, and that is just because the Bible talks about deceivers it does not mean that I am one. Yeah. And any person who sends me an email calling me a deceiver without listening to anything that I've taught and without, listening to, and without looking at my life or knowing anything about my life is totally illogical. They are totally without any scrap, scrap of logic in their brain mm. to be able to call someone a deceiver without knowing the person whatsoever. Yeah. A person who is actually a deceiver needs to be tested through their actions. And the person who does that with me will find my actions are very consistent with all of my words. And so therefore, I'm not a deceiver. Now, with the, with the issue of whether I'm Jesus or not, well, it's going to be very, very hard for any person to determine whether I'm Jesus or not if A, they are not connected with God, or, and B, they are not connected with love. It's going to be very, very difficult for them to determine whether I'm a deceiver. Mm. If they're connected with God, as I said in the first century, they would know God's Son they would know the person who has become at one with God. They would know every person who's become at one with God, actually. So, for example, if you become at one with God and I become at one with God and we meet each other for the first time, you would know that I'm at one with God mm -hmm. and I would know that you're at one with God because we both have that direct communication with God at that moment sure. and we both know. Mm -hmm. If we don't know, it's because A, we're not at one with God yet and B, we have no ability to determine or, or discern what the true character of the other person is. Right. Most of the people who email me these kind of emails have no idea what my true character is. They've never had any personal dealings with me. 
they base it all on, on innuendo, media, media accusations, which are all mostly false, yeah. and, uh, and also their own interpretation of what they believe I would be doing if, I, if I'm saying I'm Jesus. Sure. Falsely. Yeah. Which, which is all their own interpretation and assumptions. It's got nothing to do with reality. Yeah. So, so I again suggest that I am not a deceiver and also this verse does not apply to me. Mm -hmm. However, you may think it applies to me and, and, that's up, and it, I'm perfectly happy for you to have that opinion if that's the opinion you want to retain. Sure. Mm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, were there more things in that subject, I think? Um, I just feel quite strongly that people accuse other people of things that they have no proof of, of yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. And they do it because of their own emotional reasons. To give you an example with this issue, I come along saying I'm Jesus. And people go, what is he saying? And they go, oh, he said that God is not an angry God. I can't believe that. He can't be Jesus. Mm. Now, the, the two, those two lo are not logical conclusions, right? Firstly, as I stated, God is a loving God. God would never be angry. Now, you don't have to believe that. If you want to believe in an angry God, go ahead. Like, you have the free will to do so. Mm -hmm. So if you want to believe in an angry God, go ahead and believe in an angry God. However, me saying that God is not an angry God doesn't make me a deceiver. In fact, if the actual truth is that God is not an angry God, and I am saying that God is not an angry God, then I am the only person not deceiving you. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many other religious people who are deceiving you by saying that God is an angry God. Right? Now, to determine deceit, we have to know the truth. I see, yes. And that's the point of what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, how do we know the truth? We know the truth by receiving divine love, having God's love enter our heart, and then the tr God exposes the truth to us, not by reading the Bible. Mm. If you read the Bible and you think you know the truth, you're out of harmony with love straight away because there are many things in the Bible that are not true and are completely out of harmony with love. And I suppose that this is where um, some people get a bit caught up, don't they, when they read the Bible or some kind of literature, holy book, something, mm -hmm. and they, they have... a a sensation that they believe is receiving God's love, that it is validation for what they're reading. In that moment. In that moment, they feel um, overwhelmed by yeah. a sense of love. Mm -hmm. and, and that's fantastic. They have received divine love. Then they say that because that happened as I was reading this book, therefore this I know that this is the truth. No, you don't know. You only know that in that moment, the very moment you received divine love, in that moment you were in harmony with truth. Mm. That's the only thing you know. You know nothing else. You can't assume that everything is true when you only read one thing at that moment that caused you to have that experience. Yeah. See, there's all these assumptions that are illogical that are made. And this is what I'm discussing with people. Illogical assumptions are going to be very damaging to your future. Very damaging. It's illogical to assume that if you have an experience of receiving divine love when you read one verse, that that means that all of the verses are true. Yeah. That's not true. I've had hundreds of experiences of receiving divine love in the first century and now by reading certain Bible verses. But I know for certain the Bible is not true. Completely true. Not yeah. I know that the verse that I was reading had a big emotional significance and a big significance in my relationship with God. That's what I know. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Yeah. And I don't make illogical assumptions about all the other verses in the Bible based on one verse. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Mm. Okay. Thank you. And one of the things I'd like to mention about people who quote the Bible to me is they quote the Bible to me making the presumption that the Bible is true. And I've quite categorically stated in many occasions that the Bible is not true. And anybody who assumes the Bible to be true is already often assuming things that are out of harmony with truth or love. In its entirety, you mean? It's not That's a, correct. true. There in, are certain things that are true yep. inside of it. Sure. But in its entirety, it is not true. Yep. And just because a person is quoting a verse to me, it means nothing. And it only proves to me that the person is indoctrinated by the Bible. That's mm. all it proves. It doesn't prove anything else. It doesn't prove that I'm a deceiver. It doesn't prove that I'm a false prophet. It doesn't even prove that I'm not Jesus. 
All it proves to me is that they are completely indoctrinated by a book that contains a whole heap of falsehood as well as a whole heap of truth, in my opinion. Yeah. That's all it proves. Like, for example, just because the Bible says something about God, such as God is a person who is wrathful and who will destroy the wicked, it does not mean that that's true about God, because I know that God will never destroy the wicked and God is not a wrathful being. So, so just because the Bible is saying something's true, it doesn't mean it is true. Mm -hmm. And so I feel it's very important for people to understand that. Secondly, um, I think it's very important for people to get this concept that many of them are being deceived while they claim that I am a deceiver. And what I mean by that is that many of their teachers are deceiving them with things from the Bible that are untrue. Hmm. Now, some of the, de the teachers are deceived themselves. And so it, it becomes easy for them to state untruth to other people because they do believe they are truths. And I understand that. I get that. So I wouldn't call those teachers deceivers. I'd call them misled or in the first century, I'd call them blind guides who lead others into the pit, yeah. you know, who, who lead other blind people into the pit. And that's what many of the teachers of today are in Christian religion. Mm -hmm. They are blind guides leading blind people into a pit. Now, many people, once they fall in the pit, feel like they've been deceived. Yeah. But many times the person who led them there was just as deceived as the person who got led mm -hmm. to the, that particular condition. What I'm suggesting to people is there is a way to tell about deceit. And the way is to actually work through the issues of love on any issue. Instead of believing that the whole of the Bible is God's word, focus on the issues of love that you listen to. So when you hear something and you feel, that doesn't feel like love to me, then put it to one side. Don't just go ahead and believe it because the Bible says it or because your minister said it. Put it to one side and allow time and prayer and other things to gel on this particular issue. Don't try to, you know, intellectually gymnastic yourself into believing it. And what I mean by that is, yeah. and I feel a lot of Christians do this, they, they do all these intellectual gymnastics in order to believe one thing is true and the other thing is true at the same time. So trying to figure an intellectual... Um... Reason why both things should be true. Yeah. Because they make the presumption that all the Bible is God's word, they say when, the, when God said that and when God said that, it must mean that I'm confused. It, God must have said that and God must have said that and I'm just confused about how God could have said both things. Yes. No, if you're confused, trust me, there's a good chance that God would be just as confused <laughs> looking at the situation. Aside from the fact that God doesn't need to be confused because God knows the emotional reasons why the writer wrote that and why the writer wrote that. Right? The, the writer, yeah. Yeah, the writer of the particular, yeah. uh, particular passages that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. My suggestion to people would be look at each passage and go, if I'm confused, there's something wrong. Yeah. God gave me a logical brain. So if I'm confused, something's wrong. So I need to put both of these verses aside and then test them through love. Test them through my feelings of love and what I believe love to be currently, which might change in the future as you receive more truth, right? Mm -hmm. And allow myself to test this process. Now, if you do not do that, there is a high likelihood in your future you will be deceived by people who either are purposefully attempting to deceive you or who are deceived themselves and have become like blind guides themselves. Mm. You will do that if you are not willing to test things yourself. Testing things yourself requires personal responsibility. Very few people on the planet want to take personal responsibility for their choices in life. God requires you to take personal responsibility for every choice you've ever made. So, so this is something out of harmony with God. If you want to put your trust in other people because you don't want to trust your own analysis, you've already gotten out of harmony with the truth about self-responsibility. Yeah. You need to take self-responsibility for every action. Later on down the track, when you've gone to war because your minister told you you should, and you arrive in, he in heaven, in the spirit world, which is what I would view the heaven to be, you will find that you'll be in the hells of the spirit world. Not be and you won't be able to say, oh, but my minister told me to do it. Yeah. Because God attributes every decision you made to you. Mm -hmm. 
God attributes every choice that you made to your own choice. You need to learn to take responsibility now for your own choices. And once you do, whenever now is, even yeah. if you're a spirit, take responsibility now for your own choices. You believed things because you were open to believing them. You believed that German people or that Japanese people or that, you know, mm -hmm. you know a person of a different colour than you deserved to die. Yeah. Or you felt justified in it because other people justified it. Or you were afraid of your government and that's what caused you to do it. Or you were afraid of all your friends and what they thought of you and that's what caused you to do it. You had some reason to take the life of another person which was out of harmony with love. You're responsible for it. Once we understand that we are personally responsible for every choice we make, we're no longer afraid about being deceived. We are very cautious about what we choose to believe. Mm -hmm. And I do suggest that people are very cautious about what they choose to believe. And they should be very cautious with everything they hear from me for the same reason. They need to analyse it from the position of love. Yeah. And then we know what we can believe. Yeah, yeah. great. Thank you. Mm.